I want you to know that I walk into this church, your paternal feast, as All Saints Church Enterprise. But with some relief. Relief because to walk into a place like this, especially this building, quite honestly, and to be gathered with this group of people who I know love Jesus and are committed to following him, I, I feel home. This is what home feels like for those who belong to Jesus Christ. And what I mean by that is that the building, the songs, the scripture, the liturgies are meant, among other things, to actually remind us of our truest and deepest identity. And that's extraordinarily important. You see, we, we live, and probably unlike any time, at least in recent memory, in the midst of a society and a world that continues to pull at us with other kinds of identities. Who are we as American citizens? Who are we as taxpayers? Who are we as Democrats and Republicans? Who are we as it relates to our American government and other governments? Who are we in relationship to persecuted Christians, which literally now are all across this planet? It, I mean, a part of me wants to go, get me out of here. Um, it's, it's intense. And each one of these groups wants to actually define you in such a way as you set yourself over and against somebody else who does not define him or herself in the same way that you do. And it is to their advantage <laughs> that they do so because we live in a winner-take-all culture. There is no such thing anymore as finding a way to live together because we care about each other. Instead, it's about a very clear, driven sense that this is the right way, and any other way other than that way actually is a betrayal. It's not just agreeing to disagree. It's betrayal. And that's the kind of language that's being used. So it's a lot to live with. <laughs> it's a lot to figure out. It's a lot to try to learn and understand and try to figure out what is our place in the midst of all of these conflicting loyalties and identities all of which in some ways have some piece of truth in them. That's a part of what makes it difficult. It's not clean in that way. It's not like you can say, that's truth and that's falsehood. Well, that really depends on the commentators you listen to. That depends on where you get your news. That depends on the opinions that you follow. It's way more complicated that especially than the extremists would like to admit. And so, how do we live in the midst of that? And how do we as a community, meaning the body of Christ, here at All Saints Enterprise, find a way to live in the midst of that where they would love, they, you fill in the blank who they are, would love to divide us and make their opinions more important than our understanding of who we are. I would urge you, especially in this election season, not to defame your Christian brothers and sisters, especially if they have opinions that are different from yours. It is a betrayal of your identity. It is a betrayal of your deepest identity. And that's what this is. This is a reminder of our deepest identity. Singing a song of the saints of God, faithful and brave and true gathering around an altar with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven. You see, what All Saints is meant to remind us of is, number one, that we, above all things, belong to Jesus Christ. And he is, in fact, the marker of our identity. When you were baptized, what happened? The oil got put on the celebrant's thumb and the sign of the cross was made on your forehead. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as whose? As Christ's forever. That is your deepest and truest identity. And no other identity is ever meant to displace that identity because that's God's word to you. That defines who you are. And so when I gather here, all of the visibility, the beauty, 
the songs and the liturgy, it's like, <sighs> okay, this, this, this is who I really am. This is who I really am. And it is out of that identity we are meant to walk on this planet between now and the time God chooses to take us home into that place where we see all of the things that these things remind us of. The beauty and the joy of heaven. A life where there is no pain or grief. Where God wipes away every tear and every eye. The conflict is gone. They shall learn war no more. Sickness and disease are gone. And we literally gather together fully clothed, fully fed at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Where we feast with great joy forever. I mean, I don't know what your picture of heaven is. But if it's somehow Casper the friendly ghost sitting on a cloud... Uh, you're, that's sisters and brothers that ain't in here instead it's choice meats it is fine wine it is glorious singing it is beauty incomparable with anything it is literally a remade heaven and earth where we gather with the saints forever coming out of the clouds the new Jerusalem the book of Revelation calls it. You see, that's where people who bear this identity go. And the more extraordinary thing is not only is that a destination, that's actually a reality that God has put in us right now. When we receive the Holy Spirit, a part of what that means is, is that we receive the spirit of the age to come. The spirit of heaven placed directly inside the deepest part of who we are. So that we are, as it writes in the, in the scripture, we are born again. Something new happens to us. And it is that newness that gives us the capacity to be able to, in essence, see life from a very different perspective. This takes us right to the Daniel lesson, the key verse to Daniel. And remember, who, where is Daniel in the midst of all of this? He's in a foreign land. Nobody believes what he believes. This tiny little cohort, and that's all. He is, in fact, what we would call an oppressed minority, you see, and persecuted besides. And it is in the midst of all of that that Daniel has this vision. And in the midst of the competing power of beasts, which represent political demonic entities, the last line of the lesson is, but the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever and ever. In other words, what that says is, is that this new life that God has planted in me is a foretaste of king things to come. And in the midst of all of the horror of beast-like political rivalry and bloodshed, what is actually happening in our midst is that God is laying out the stage for him to literally take heaven and earth. And that we, <laughs> in a way that we certainly don't deserve, actually get to be a part of that. And that getting to be a part of that has already begun in God giving us that foretaste, the spirit of the age to come, the power of the Holy Spirit, the new nature, all grafted and poured deeply within us. You see, if you don't believe that to the very soles of your feet, the blessed are the poor, woe to the rich, the gospel lesson makes no sense whatsoever because it in an extraordinarily stark way turns upside down the values that our culture and society hold incredibly dear you see if you don't believe in the triumph of our Lord Jesus Christ and the new heaven and the new earth your only job description your only way to live is take what you can and get what you can and woe to anybody who gets in your way But if you believe that God has given you a foretaste of the age to come and that he is pouring life in you supernatural and that he really is committed to filling you with good things and carrying you even in the midst of the worst of circumstances into the age to come, then you can live with the kind of generosity and kindness that is described in the scripture passage. And that's not being naive. That's actually being prophetic. 
It is being courageous. It is being, it is living out of that supernatural power within you, even in the face of circumstances that would tell you, you know, to live like that, you're just, pardon me, you're just full of it. You know, in other words, it makes no sense. It's crazy talk. You have to believe this stuff. In other words, to live out this kind of life. Because that is, in fact, the call that God places upon us. And that is, in fact, the witness of saints in ages past. To say, and I mean to be one too, as we sang in the opening hymn, is to say, I'm willing to live out of this storehouse that God has placed within. I'm willing to set my life based on the agenda that is laid out in the scriptures. I do, in fact, believe in the powerful triumph of Jesus Christ over every single wrong, and that even now, God is at work in the world in the midst of the gore and the violence and the bloodshed and the acrimony in a way that is literally preparing the way for the return of his son. And I want to be one who is found faithful when he returns. Crazy talk or the most realistic way to live? You have to decide that. But if you mean to be one too, then this becomes a job description. That even in the midst of the worst of circumstances, when we mourn and grieve and are hungry, we believe with all of our heart that God is coming to set things right. And that for those who laugh in this world full of the riches of good things, with no care for other people, and it's just about protecting and taking care of mine. It is to those people that Jesus says, Whoa, because you are under judgment. So sisters and brothers, what is your truest identity? What is the definition of who you really are? Is it in here? Is it reflected in what you see here? Is this your true home, that foretaste of the age to come as we gather together here in the midst of angels and archangels and all the company of heaven? That's why I needed to come today. I needed to be reminded of that, of who I am, really, who God is making me, imperfect, broken, sinful as I am. And that I'm on a destination that God has defined as a new heaven and a new earth. That he has prepared for me and for you what the collect calls ineffable joys. So come, say yes to that which we declare to be true because God has said it. And to live out that identity, praying Involved. This is not a call to withdrawal. Praying for the election, speaking peace to your neighbors, giving out with great kindness the resources that the Lord has given you, choosing to live without fear, choosing instead to live in faith, knowing that even in the midst of all of the four beasts, the kingdom is being handed over to God. Amen.